But I see that we have reached the top of the 10 o'clock hour at the Giant Granite Phallus in the District of Criminals. And it is a Friday night, according to my calendar, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it is Friday night, September 20th, 2024, in the year of our clownishness. Uh, That means it is time for open lines once again. It is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know what is on your mind tonight. Uh, What's been gnawing at your backside all week in COVID land? Uh, The stream link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. Also in the new Prisoners Telegram chat channel. Call in, let us know what you want to talk about. And uh, don't worry about turning on your camera again if you are of the shy pers- persuasion. Honestly, we don't really care what you look like. No, nobody is, uh, you know, losing sleep over what any of us look like. So uh, that's not a big thing. Um, turn on your microphone, though. You do need to do that. And uh, also make sure you're not listening to the playback on one of the live stream chattel, uh, channels like uh, Odyssey or BitChute, Rumble or Telegram. Because uh, you'll be 20 seconds behind everybody else. And that'll be really awkward. It's really strange. What's happening, Rob? Welcome back to Open Lines. What's going on, Drizzle? How you doing tonight? I'm How's doing your Friday? My... Uh... My Friday was productive, strangely enough. That's good to hear. Yeah. How productive? How productive? Tell me more. So productive that uh, I actually managed to get the uh, the felines fairly well integrated with one another this afternoon. Nice. Major Tom Tom and Briar Rose are like bonding now. I wouldn't say they're bonding necessarily. Um, I, th- I think Rose still has some emotional issues that she needs to work out. I'm not quite sure where those came from. Um, but they're they're at least tolerating each other's presence without, you know, throwing hands and shit. Well, and I was, I was actually, I was really impressed by Major Tom. Uh, because she came up and uh, batted at him a couple of times, and he just stood there and took it. He was like, all right, that's all you got? What, what else? What else you got? It's like, yeah, I'm the new dude. I got to yeah. take it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. That'll uh, <laughs> endear him to her. Sure. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I told her she's still queen bitch, so I think that uh, that helps smooth things over a little bit. Yeah, because she's the only female in the house. So, technically, that's still accurate. Yeah, I have uh, one female cat, and she is the queen bitch. She lets everybody know when they mess with her what the fuck's up. Oh, yeah. I know. I know how it works. I've had cats before. And she's the most proficient hunter, too, strangely enough. Yeah, yeah, it usually is the female. The males are always just kind of... Like, especially this one, man. The male cats that I've had have all been, like, pretty chill. And just not really worried about doing a whole lot of anything. They're just like, ah, yeah, I'll fuck when I feel like fucking. Otherwise, I'm just going to, like, hang out over here. Yeah, the patriarch of this clan of three. uh, He got his balls cut off. And uh, he just went to the food bowl. Yep. A solace for it all. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, a, wasn't a whole lot of moving around after that. He does go out every day, though, but he doesn't catch anything. No. Probably too sunshine. much effort. Pretty much. So uh, I guess uh, one of the obvious things to talk about today is another um, half-assed fake assassination of Trump. With um, what is this? Like I, I heard they used like the the C or D team when they did the Bay of Pigs invasion on the CIA front. Like, 
what are, what are they doing here? This this is like we're like way down the alphabet. Like oh, R to me R this for is like obvious. The, the retard team. Well, so you you uh, and I, I'm a, I'm gonna assume you're talking about the alleged third ass, assassination attempt, right? Is this number three already? I think so. Well, because they're 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 trying to pin an attempt on this Ralph kid. Which I don't think it actually was. I think it was probably just like two dipshits fucking around too close to the golf course. And somebody was like, oh, we can spin this. The third one, really- I don't... I, all I heard about it... Because again, it's not like I go seeking out this news about the the selection cycle. Uh, what I heard was like they they had uh, discovered a vehicle that had like a bomb in it or something, and they were calling that an assassination attempt because it was it was like in the vicinity of his rally or some shit. Man, you don't even have to try hard anymore. Apparently not. Apparently not. Because I mean, you had the new acting head of the Social Security or not Social Security <laughs> Secret Service. Uh, it might be same difference come out twice now and be like, but, 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 but we need more funding. We don't have enough people. We don't get enough resources to be able to do our job all of a sudden. Okay. Then we call off the event, right? Cause we don't have the proper security in place. Since when did they ever uh, let that stop before? Ne- never like never, never. Like just come up with the funding for anything like that. So I, I don't take much stock in that these were like real attempts. It's uh, the, the first time he seems to have gotten shot in the air with a pellet or something innocuous. Okay. So let's tease and, that out a minute. Because cause here's, here's one of the things that I found uh, very interesting as far as parallels go, right? So on the Matthew Crooks kid, uh, you had him appearing in a BlackRock commercial, right? The the Ryan Routh kid, well, I guess he's not technically a kid. He's like my age, older, uh, and definitely more demented. Um, (laughs) He was also, yeah, he was also in a BlackRock commercial. But like, what are the odds? What are the odds that like the two dudes that that allegedly try to take a a crack at Trump are both in BlackRock commercials? You think you think maybe there might be a um, I don't know, uh, uh, an agent or maybe a uh, I don't know, like a like a production company that would supply something like crisis actors that that maybe was involved with both of these gentlemen. Lookout Mountain special. Maybe it's maybe it's not the first time that these guys have, uh, you know, been used in uh, promotional material. We'll call it before. Well, I, I don't watch the TV news, but uh, I've heard two different takes that, uh, you know, Trump is you know leading in all the states, and it's going to be a landslide. And then I've heard the uh, liberal slanted one where. You know, Kamala's taking the lead in swing states, and she's got like a five-point advantage. And she's gonna win. It seems uh, like the script is one of those. Let's make sure it's so fucking tight and disputed that all the MAGA retards and the uh, Kamala mm-hmm. brainwashed fucking stooges all clash because may- maybe it'll come down Dude. to uh, her. Her vote as the uh, the tie breaking vote in the Senate. <laughs> hmm. That would be interesting. That would be a very interesting outcome, and not one that I had I foreseen just, either. I just made that up, so I mean it's probably not a thing, but uh, who knows, it could man. be, right? It could be. Sure, I mean, this is uh, this is clown world, man. Anything goes. You know, it's not it's not like there's they're standing on tradition or anything. It's everything's new. Everything's novel. We just figure it out as we go along. It'll be good. It'll all work out in the end. Don't worry, folks. I, I just had ignore that mushroom cloud. <laughs> I, I just had an interesting conversation with a Russian friend of mine that I've been working with for like 
eight years at least. Oh, yeah. And uh, I've exchanged a uh, few books with him. I gave him part of the uh, Anthony Sutton Wall Street series, and I gave him the Devil's Chessboard. And you know, he he's he grew up in the Soviet Union until he was like an adult, and decided to you know come over to the United States and do something other than the bullshit that they were subjecting to there. But, uh, you know, he, I, I told him that, you know, this country's turning communist and he was like, well, you don't understand. That's that, that term doesn't apply. He's like socialism. What we had over here in the United and uh, the Soviet Union was like, say you needed a million pairs of eyeglasses. Well, the state would produce a million pairs. And if you came up short, there wasn't a problem. If you came up over, then, you know, somebody's going to the gulag to serve out some term sentence. And I, I was like, well, you know, that, that was the, that was the original capitalist plan was the Bolshevik revolution and that type of socialism. But mm -hmm. the, the, the people who shouldn't uh, be, they came up with the whole Chinese experiment where they mixed in, you know, elitism with uh, communism, where the yep. standard working class is, you know, living in their little fucking slums and um, having an opportunity to join the Communist Party and maybe exceed, you know, exceed their expectations, but. That's where we're headed. We're not going to like Soviet style stuff. We're going not into quite. that, yeah, you know, slave labor, um, <laughs> cooking computer board components in your little hut uh, next to your cot that you're sleeping in. Sixty percent of the kids are getting birth defects. You know, Chinese towns like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's um, definitely not going to be what what the Soviet Union was like because that's it's not what we started with um, that's that's the interesting thing about whenever they install uh, these regimes into into various areas of the world it, it always morphs into something different because of the endemic culture of the area um, well if you if you were to venture a guess, what's the catalyst to, you know, tip things here? Is it this election? Is it the collapse of the dollar? What What is the I catalyst? Think, so I think we're already in a form of, um, so it, we're, we're not going to become full communist, right? Um, we are going to devolve into a technocratic state. Some people would say that it's already happened and they just haven't announced it yet. And I'm kind of of that mind. Um, so what we're going to see isn't going to be necessarily um, human driven. What we're going to see is a forced equity on the people uh, by, for lack of a better term, machine intelligence. Or at least that is what is going to be put forth to the public as the face. We've figured out how to fix all of the problems with capitalism or democracy or whatever fucking word they want to use, right? Uh, and yeah, basically. You already know what the answer is. It's AI. Is. No, it's AI. AI is the mask that will be sold to the, the populace for authoritarian government because that creates the proper amount of separation between the controllers and the control. Well, on a um, technocratic uh, slant, I would say if you could have an artificial intelligence that was a logic engine and wasn't susceptible to propaganda and the fakery that you know they've just so overwhelmingly hit people with these days it would be better off um closer to anarchism than uh anything else <laughs> but that's not you know it's ai is just algorithms programmed by humans and 
when you're filtering the uh, output to like a, an agenda or some type of political slant, then you're never going to get, you know, some kind of truth out of that shit. No, not at all. But the problem is, so like, I know that, that the, what they're selling the world is AI is bullshit. You know that too. Uh, the problem is there's a large number of people out there who are extremely naive. And they're buying into this shit 100%. Uh, like, for example, um, earlier today, Wired Magazine put out a tweet. And this was, this was how the tweet read, verbatim. I'm looking at it right now. AI has scrambled our ability to tell what's real and what's synthetic. No, it hasn't. No. Not, I, I mean... not even in the least. But th that's the narrative that they're pushing. And like I say, there are people that are starting to buy into it. And the problem is, again, the belief of these naive people because they believe that that is the world that they exist in. So they are going to act as if. Well, it's... it's the, the club gets smaller and smaller <laughs> of these people. I'm, uh, I'm thinking that, uh, that the whole Trump thing is just a attempt to rile up the base to take up arms or uh, if he doesn't win come the fake selection, then, you know, January 6th times 10, you know, fucking team America world police kind of joke. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. it could very well be. Um, I, I don't know. It's they're doing, they're definitely cause I don't, I don't not paying a whole lot of attention to the selection. I look at the headlines of, of, you know, various news aggregators and that's about as much as I know what's going on. Um, I don't listen to any of the fucking talking head bullshit because none of them know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, but it's interesting because on, on the Trump side, I'm getting very heavy 2020 vibes, right? Where they believe they're, they're, they're just, they, they can't lose. There's no possible way that they can lose, Right. Like it's in the bag. It's might as well just stick it in the bank. It's we're good to go boys. And then over on the camel side, it's like 2016 where, where they're putting out this message that, that, you know, nobody wants Trump again. Nobody wants to go back to you know, what we had before. They don't want to be burdened by that anymore, so to speak. Yeah, it's funny, though. I know people who still believe that their vote counts, and they hate Kamala so bad that, like, they were, they've been repulsed by Trump ever since he was a candidate initially, and they're uh, thinking that their vote counts, so they're going to vote for Trump. <laughs> and I, I, I laugh about it. Wait, 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 let me make sure I'm understanding this right. So there were people previously who were like, I'll never vote for Trump. I can't stand him. I hate him. I'll, anybody but Trump. I'll vote for anybody but Trump. And then Kamala comes along and they're like, oh my God, anybody but Kamala. And so now yeah. they're going to vote for Trump. Isn't that the point of the whole duopoly and fake, a, you know, hopium that they're pushing with these candidates? Oh, my goodness. Like, she's the most populous candidate since Ron Paul, if you listen to her talk now. I mean, people come into her house, she's going to fucking shoot them. Dude, she was on is, Oprah. That's what I'm saying. That's It's laughable. Oprah like, doesn't even if, have a show anymore, and she was on Oprah. 
if somebody came onto your estate, uh, they would probably be shot uh, way before they got to the door of your house. And if they did get to the door, they wouldn't get in. Uh, but sure, you, you'd shoot them if they got in there. I believe you. Maybe, maybe that uh, that daughter of uh, her husband's might get to him first. Ugh. <laughs> I, I figure I, that's I, why not, they keep her around the house, right? For like security reasons. Well, woof. Nancy Pelosi should have kept some, you know, illegitimate adopted child around to make sure that when her husband was having gay sex orgies, they didn't they didn't end with a hammer. But who knows what's real anymore, Driz? I know that's the problem. Uh, they 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 uh, put stupid shit like that in the news to distract people from the real horrors that they're committing, and get people arguing over it, and make people look like idiots because most of it's fake. And like, who knows? Uh, according to video camera footage, dude just randomly was outside and broke a window with a fucking hammer and got in the house. So I mean. As much as Paul Pelosi may be a uh, pedophile and uh, man, part of fucking what's it? What's the uh, uh, homosexual? The man boy, yeah, homosexual. The man boy love association. Yeah, homosexual. Oh, Nambla, Nambla. You're talking about man. Nambla. Could be, you know, one of the freaking board members for all I know. But uh, the fact that they spun that into what it was, like. What, what surprises me is anybody in that position of power, Nancy, her house wouldn't have such, you know, have security dudes walking the fucking grounds and making sure shit like that doesn't happen. Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe it's only, maybe there's only that type of security around when she's there. That That's also possible. But and and she would, wasn't there because remember he kept going. Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? And uh, at least that's what they that, say. If you're that good of an inside trader that you're a hundred millionaire on a two hundred thousand dollar a year salary at best, I mean, you can afford extra security. Is but, that her only home in the San Francisco area? Do you know? Does anybody know? I. I'd venture a guess and say that they have houses in multiple places. That's what I'm thinking too. And I'm also thinking that they're an older couple uh, and, and maybe not even legitimately uh, married to begin with. Not, not that they didn't do like the paperwork and shit, but they just not that they love each other. They're just together for power reasons. Um, they might not even live in the same house together. Did you see the uh, video of her daughter talking about Gavin McLeod, the proud boy guy who she was like friends with and talking about what a joke it was? And <laughs> I, Well, I've heard other people talk that January way about 6th. Gavin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was it's... there to film it, man. She had the exclusive rights to film it. How, how does, does that not like, how does that not show premeditation? How do you get exclusive rights to film something you don't know is going to happen? Well, according to the Q drop 10, 44, six, five, seven, seven, you need to just trust the plan, my man, because, uh, Oh, Ooh, did the AM wake up chat hit 500 yet? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. For those Q was, drops. It was, it was 498. <laughs> oh, damn it. They lost one. It's probably Chuck. I don't know. No. I, I I feel like I'm going to lose a couple people there with the stupid shit that they're posting. I can't help but just be an asshole. <laughs> uh, to like, me, that's what makes shit. that whole channel entertaining. Yeah. You know, get one of those days at work when nobody's uh, working after noon. It's funny. Not a single email from, like, somebody emailed me at, like, 5 after 12. 
and I hadn't like taken lunch yet. So like I saw it and then didn't get a single internal email from that time until I logged off at five o'clock. It's great. Oh, wow. It's a great Friday afternoon. I would say so. Well, were, were people like not dying or not breaking their, their equipment or well, just nobody was working. I, I, uh, I'm in charge of all the stuff that's on the back end, all the servers and the whole organization. So as long as my servers are running, it's gold and we have shut virtualized. So if a server does fail, things move over to another server and oh, keep nice. on running. Nice. That's how it should be. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Everybody's into the uh, cloud computing nonsense, but that's uh, overpriced garbage. Yeah. It's good, it's good for some things, but I, I think there was uh, some magazine that came out where they were talking about the up and coming CIOs and how they were all taken. They were getting out of the data center business, managing their own stuff and putting up and into these <laughs> Microsoft and Amazon and Google cloud service stuff. Oh and yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, that's, that's not going to end up in like monopoly situation at all. That's yeah. Don't worry about that. Well, what happens is you have less control over your stuff. So when something goes down, you're at the mercy yep. of whoever, whoever they've got staff and their stuff. But yeah, which, has, also, which has happened before too. AWS goes down, half the internet goes with it. Yeah, and Microsoft Azure has a nice large portion themselves, the same stuff. Outages for no reason. I don't know. I've been working with them uh, peripherally on some of the stuff that I do, and I'm not very impressed. Hmm. My on-premise stuff, it's always available, so nobody's ever going away from that full time. No, I wouldn't suspect so. Not if they have any intelligence about them. Well, hopefully long enough for me to write out my career in corporate slavery. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I don't I don't know. Uh, you know, come to think of it, though. With your expertise, you you're probably going to have job security regardless. Like especially like especially if you're good with developing IT systems, like people are, they're still going to need those type of people. It's it's all the it's basically all the service industry, all the financial, uh, a lot of the education. Like, that's the shit that's going to be going away. The people that are going to be capable of building digital systems, dude, not everybody can do that. And it's not like they're going to start teaching a bunch of people how to do that either. Now, I can build a data center from what I know. So I don't worry about <laughs> job security as long as they're still hiring humans. Yeah. Cause that's, that's what I don't think people understand about the, I don't even want to call it the fourth industrial revolution, but this, what they're trying to do to transform the, uh, the labor market essentially is they, they really want to turn human beings into machines because that's that's how they want the future of work to happen. They want people to be continually interfacing with machines in order to produce work. Like ever more complicated digital machines. Yeah, I'm sure the uh <laughs> the uh alternative when there's no more jobs left guaranteed basic income stuff i'm sure they'll give you plenty to survive and thrive on i 
how far you think we're off from, you know, home ownership being out of reach. I know it's still, I mean, it's not in reach for a lot of people like it used to be, but right. Uh, it, it's yeah. Still, and it's going quick too. Um, if I had to wager a guess, I would say six years. I think uh, they're going to slam some shit down on 2030. Yeah. Uh, I would I would say most likely, because that's going to be one of the most contentious things for Americans. Um you know, private property is is basically enshrined in our founding documents. Uh, so they're they're going to have to do a lot to people before they're going to be able to take that away from them. But uh, I could totally see a progression of events where we have a second Trump presidency. Uh, the economy crashes, right? Doesn't collapse, but it does crash. We're we're talking like up to I would say like a fifty to sixty percent devaluation of the markets wherever they they're currently at when it happens. Um, like, which will just wreck the nation right there. Like, anything that's still holding together at this point will start falling apart when that happens. It won't destroy the country, but it will basically finish the job of turning us into a third world nation, right? Um, so it'll just be like crippling poverty everywhere except for the 0.01% after that. Uh, then we'll have uh, more than likely uh, Governor California Psycho come in as uh, the new president in 2028 president for life uh wh- whatever could be i don't know <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not trying to project that far ahead um but i can foresee a scenario where uh one of the stipulations included in receiving your univ your universal basic income from daddy government is relinquishing your private property rights Well, I guess it really depends on how strict they got on how what you can do with the land that you supposedly own. Can you still grow food on it? Can you, you know, do anything like that? Yeah. I, I don't see that stuff going away anytime soon. As much as some of the states try to stop you from collecting rainwater and such. As long as you can have a well on your property, you can get water. I'm just I'm I'm really interested to see uh, what the aftermath of this selection is because I expected uh, a lot more from the public after 2020 than apparently what we got because what we got was just absolutely fucking lame. Well, it they they want you to believe that there's two factions. Um, And maybe there is to a large degree, but I think the two factions agree on probably 95% of the shit Mm -hmm. and uh, fight over, you know, dumb shit. Everybody wants to keep making bombs and and enriching all the people invested in the military industrial complex. The pharmaceutical industry has got a stranglehold on government, um, television advertising and perception even though everywhere in the world now they're getting sued for the whole COVID scam that they pulled off and new studies are coming out every day showing the uh, long-term effects of getting more and more of these poison shots. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you'd never know it from if you just sat and watched normal TV, go get your COVID booster. It's that time of year. Are they still pushing that? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. That that lets lets you know how, you know, things stand. Wow. It's it's beyond obvious. Like, even the people who didn't report problems 
to these databases that they set up, if they even accepted them, um, they're just like accepting of the fact that they're fucked and they don't, you know, their doctor's going to tell them it was from the COVID shot, but all of a sudden you got blisters or some kind of blood disorder. Yeah. Paralysis. Yeah. Some kind of uh, nerve damage. Apparently there's, there's quite a bit of that going around. I saw uh, lots of stories of people developing tinnitus after having the shots where they never had it before. Yeah, I did do, they used to work, uh, he used to be my director where I worked when I first started there. He uh, moved on and he got the shot to go work at another hospital. And as soon as he got it, he got tinnitus. Never had that problem before. Yeah, that's nerve damage. That's exactly what tinnitus is. Uh, right, right before I started doing uh, media, I was uh, training to go and work for a company that worked with uh, Miracle Ear, selling their hearing aids. So I was I was basically to to get prepared for that. I was given a crash course in human hearing and how it works and and all of that sort of shit. Because their their product is actually decent, right? Because I could go in. Um, you could hook the hearing aid up to their software. And I could go in and literally like adjust the like a 24 band or 32 band EQ to exactly what the person wanted to hear. It was it was phenomenal. Like nothing I've ever seen as far as hearing technology goes. It it was pretty incredible. And I mean, they cost a pretty penny too. Like the the uh, entry level set was like I don't know eight grand or something like that. Um, so yeah. Um, but it worked. It actually worked because it, it was actually helping people, you know, restore uh, some of their, their mental faculties even because people don't realize that when you start losing your hearing, your mental faculties start to decline as well because there's stuff that the brain used to get as far as stimulation that it doesn't get anymore. It goes away and it never comes back. But... Over the course of learning all of that over, it took, like normally it was supposed to take about a month, but for us it took three months because everyone was retarded from COVID. Um, And I never actually really ended up going to work for the company anyway. Like I saw when the shots came out, like how they were going to be rolling and I was like, no, fuck this, I'm out. Um, But I learned a lot about how... uh, hearing functions in the human organism and it's 100 percent nerve driven when you have hearing damage you're having damage done to nerves that's what does the work inside your ear it's nerve endings there's there's no way around that they can't they can't try to spin it as anything else that's that's 100 percent the shots causing nerve damage oh i know people who have heart conditions now since they got it um i knew some my ex got the blistering thing where she was getting random blisters all over her body it's uh really disturbing that so many people had so many side effects and you know like i said how many do you think really reported them except the people who maybe couldn't get up out of bed and go to work anymore right a lot of annoying things people have new autoimmune diseases they never had mm-hmm. ah and these evil motherfuckers are still out there pretending yeah. yeah just just like the the war games said would happen you know like it's nothing has played out any differently it's it's kind of incredible. It it almost seems like they're trying to like justify launching nukes at this point when the Canadian prime minister and I guess the guy who's running this country, Anthony Blinken, go up there and talk about 
Biden's what, given uh, Jill Biden. Jill Biden's running this country. I don't I don't know if you saw it. There was a cabinet meeting earlier this week, Rob, uh, and they <laughs> opened uh, with comments from the first lady. Well, that seems to be who you open a cabinet meeting with. Was she given the eulogy? I didn't even eulogy? realize it was a cabinet position. Was I thought she given it was the just eulogy? You were married to the dude. That doesn't. I mean, it's is is that supposed to be the dumb explanation that they give people? Like I remember they did, said the same thing when uh, Ronald Reagan was fucking checked out that Nancy was running everything. Right. That's, Which was bullshit. Like, yeah, ignorant of what's really. <laughs> the power structure there. Yeah. Only thing Nancy was running was a train. That was it. I mean, the only difference between Reagan and Zelensky is Reagan didn't play a uh, piano with his penis. As far as so. we know, it wasn't caught on tape. Well, I mean, you yeah. know, there's there were a lot of movies that were made at Lookout Mountain, Rob, that never got public release. So uh, you might have to take that back. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I gotta rethink that whole hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what do you think? Uh, the whole fucking P Diddy thing oh, going man. on. Um, I don't know if he, I've made up my mind quite yet. Do you think he's gonna kill himself in jail too? He's on suicide watch. I, that's the standard. I mean, when you're facing the rest of your life in prison, I think you get checked in there and they won't give him bail, even though he's got, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to put right. up for collateral. Right. And what was it? They were, I heard him say something like they, like he had promised that he wasn't going to have any women over at the house or something. It was like, dude, nobody's worried about that. No. Nobody knows you don't you don't roll that way. I mean, to be fair, I think he rolls both ways. That yeah, could be. But from I what mean, I, yeah, from what I've heard, he uh, he he actually enjoys uh, being on bottom. If you're going to be uh, hosting something called a freak out, I imagine all kinds of weird shit's going to go on, especially if you need IV fucking drips after the, the yeah. weekend's over. Yeah. Yeah, and you're answering the door uh, of your hotel room naked. Just be like, come on in. <laughs> I, I, uh, I take him to be a squealer, though, so... I wonder what kind of insurance policies he set himself up with because it seems like it was just a another Epstein-type fucking honeypot. A lot of people got, I guess, uh, record deals going through that ritual. Well, so I would figure this is probably how it works. And I figure this is this is also how uh, Hollywood works, which is why the the whole Weinstein thing was actually a much bigger deal than what most people realize. With all of these uh, entertainment industry um, occupations, right? There are levels that you can achieve success wise, right? Uh, cause, cause there, there are people that, uh, you know, they have careers in Hollywood, uh, where they spend their entire lives as actors, but we never know their names, right? Because they're, they're not top bill on the marquee or anything. Um, but they're good enough to be able to make a living at this craft, even without being super famous, right? Like those people are actually out there. There's not a whole lot of them, but they are out there. Same thing with musicians, right? So there's different levels of su success that you can achieve within the industry based upon how much you're willing to compromise yourself. And there are specific people that are 
placed in positions of power in each industry, and you don't need a whole lot of these people, maybe two or three per industry at the most. Um, you need these people who their main responsibility is putting people in situations to be compromised. Because well, we, whole- we have all of these stories of, of actors, of musicians, comedians, the whole gamut who have said they weren't willing to do whatever it was that they were asked to do. And as soon as they said no, they stopped working. They couldn't get a gig anymore. So we know that happens. There has to be another side of that coin where the people say yes. We had uh, the whole gay mafia going on that probably still is going on out there. Yeah. Yeah, gay mafia didn't go anywhere. It still runs Hollywood. And Roy Cohn was tied to that, who was uh, Trump's freaking mentor. And uh, there may small degrees of separation. Um, when, when you find out somebody who was most likely involved in the Kennedy assassination, Jack Valente. Oh, he's uh, absolutely the, involved. Yeah, Roy Cohn when, was on the board of Permindex. When uh, dude goes and becomes the head of the Motion Picture Association of America and uh, shapes, you know, Hollywood for basically most of our adult lives with all their. um, Yeah, I mean, he he basically had veto power for Hollywood. Yeah, so a lot of predictive programming, a lot of things that they want you to believe is truth that they just pump into people. The uh, the people who don't read, because uh, if you get your news from the TV and the newspaper, you're going to be sadly disappointed in uh, what the real situation is. Well, I think so. Uh, especially if you're living in Springfield, Ohio. I don't I don't know if you caught the uh, the first segment in the pre-show or not, Rob, but they uh, they have instituted emergency measures in Springfield, Ohio. It's they are now considered to be in a state of emergency. Are they eating the people now? (laughs) Not quite yet. Not quite. But we might be getting there soon. This this might be the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. Thanks to those damn Haitians eating pussy in the street. (laughs) <laughs> some kind of voodoo ritual they were doing I don't know well seems like uh, some type of plan some kind of coordinated plan even I mean the the, the Haitians were brought in as supposedly humanitar- humanitarian immigration like they didn't just come you know attack the border uh illegally so right. they're they're le- legally where they're supposed to be but something tells me they haven't been given the resources to you know get themselves up on their feet you know coming from somewhere with nothing uh, uh, except the show on your back so well, I, I can that's... just imagine when you overwhelm a population and put like that many extra people on the infrastructure and everything going on there it's just, our, our, what, what are you, what are you trying to create there? Social experiments. You're trying to create chaos. That's, yeah, exactly. that's exactly what you're trying to create. It's so bad now. Let me again, make sure that I'm not misspeaking here, but I believe major time. No, not on the debt. All right. All right. <laughs> He'll probably scream for a bit, but it'll be all right. Um, They now have, yeah, Governor Mike DeWine announced on Tuesday that Ohio State Police would be stationed in city schools to alleviate growing safety concerns. Additionally, bomb-sniffing dogs and security cameras have been stationed around the city. So, increased surveillance increased law enforcement presence in the schools uh problem reaction solution 
right? Well, I mean, I'm isn't, sure. isn't the state essentially getting exactly what it wants as a result? I'm sure, like, if we all just got digital IDs with all our biometrics on them, that would, you know, solve the whole problem right there. But it would still be racist to ask you for it if you went to vote. Oh, they're working on it. They're they're trying to figure out how to uh, how to get you your digital ID, Rob. Well, they they're know, already making. They know how important it is to you. They're already making everybody in uh, May seventh, two thousand twenty-five. If you don't have the real ID, driver's license in your state, you can no longer fly commercially and within domestically even. No, well, I wasn't planning to fly ever again anyway. So, well, I wouldn't. You... I'm just saying. Hey, what's up, Rob? What's happening, Yana? How you been? You know, uh, I've uh, I've actually been doing quite a bit of work uh, here recently in uh, Springfield, Ohio. I'm glad you checked in. <laughs> and. Um, you know, um, I didn't really get into it last night. We were talking more about the um, the paucity, uh, the the scarcity of um, feral cats. Because I mean, that that's actually what led me to go back to work Springfield two nights in a row. Because I'm like, all right, I I'm gonna go there at night when I know all the alley cats are out. Because every town you work. When you're down by restaurant row at night and they're all done closing up shop and half of them put the food out for the fucking cats. And so all I got to do is hit a couple of alleys. I mean, every city I go to and it's the same story. I mean, there's feral cat population in every town but Springfield. So I don't know who's eating the cats. I don't know if they're Haitians or meth heads. But on, on a different note, what I didn't mention was... Um, uh, for one thing, Springfield and Chillicothe are, are very similar in that they're pretty much um, factory towns. You know, um, for those that are unawares, um, they both make semi-trucks. Um, Chillicothe makes the Kenworth or KW semi-trucks. And... Um, the international uh, is uh, like uh, IH international. They they're uh, the one in Springfield, Ohio. Uh, and so you know, because I, I took a couple of deliveries out to the big international truck plant, and I mean, it, you know, I'm, car plants are fucking huge man it's all spread out and then when you see a, the, the lot just filled with fucking semi you know cabs and shit wow um but anyways uh the mayor of springfield it's actually a well that's what's weird okay uh and that's that's why i jumped on here i got home well, yeah, he's got emergency man. powers now right yeah, I, as soon as I heard that over the Ohio Public Radio, I checked in on the internet, and then I sent you a link. Right. Because I was like, oh, Drizzle's got to hear about this. We got another fucking emergency superpower joining the fucking Hall of Justice super friends. <laughs> oh, man. And this guy's name is Rob Rue. Right. Uh, Terrible name for a public servant. Rob Rue, uh, he, he's a native of Springfield and Heidelberg University, which is in Springfield. Um, he made the city commission, I don't know, like five, seven years ago or something. Um, but his real um, bona fide, for lack of a better term, was that he added sexual orientation to the non-discrimination uh, municipal ordinance for Springfield? Anyways, um, and but you know he's for tax cuts, but he's also for that 
current thing. Uh, oh, let me go over here to Wikipedia. Let me see what Wikipedia. Hang on. Oh, good lord. I just found uh, it. It's real During the show. Springfield, Ohio cat eating hoax in 2024, Rue addressed challenges related to the recent increase in the city's Haitian immigrant population, which has placed pressure on local resources and feral cat population. Anyway, <laughs> amid heightened tensions and public debates, he called for cooperation and support to manage the situation while expressing concern over safety and community unity. Well, that's from number seven, updated September the 12th. After bomb threats and political ago. vitriol, Ohio mayor says enough. Retrieved from the New York Times on the 15th. It's so now, bad. Yeah, well, it's been updated. It's so it's bad, Yona, that they canceled Culture Fest. Yeah. But Driz, the real reason I jumped on, uh, I had heard rumblings of shit going down once again in good old bloody Letcher County. Because, you know, West Virginia and Eastern Kentucky have a rich tradition of packing guns and getting into family feuds. Like, you ever heard of the Hatfield and McCoy? I was going to say, isn't that where that feud took place? Yes. Hatfields are in West Virginia. The McCoys live in Kentucky. Yeah, everybody Uh, thinks it's Arkansas for some reason. No, no, no. Those Ozarkian rednecks are not hillbillies. They're something else. They're Ozarkian or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, they're closer to swamp people. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, uh, you know, they're honestly, not hill people. I would probably call them hill country coon asses. Yeah. Basically. They're, they're not quite to the level of hill jack. Right. Yeah. Because hill jack is from West Virginia. A hillbilly is from Kentucky, and a buckabilly is from Ohio. But they're all the same thing. That yes, you have a purdy mouth. Um, but anyways, amidst this long historic tradition of hangings and gunfights and feuds and murders at the courthouse and, and everything, um, I heard <laughs> shit was going down. Uh, at Letcher County Courthouse yesterday. That's uh, Whitesburg, Kentucky, for the uninitiated. It's uh, just across the state line from, like, uh, Wise, Virginia, which is in the western part of Virginia. I said western part of Virginia, not to be confused with West Virginia. I know it's also confused. Anyway, the sheriff in the courthouse... Uh, in the courtroom, apparently in the hallway back to the judge's chambers, got into a uh, verbal, loud argument with the judge. And the judge went on back in the chambers, and the sheriff followed him, fucking shot and killed his ass. I saw that story. I did apparently. too. I thought it took hey. place in Texas. No. no, that was Kentucky, right? Okay. No, no. Hang on. It was in the in the in the judge's chambers in yeah. Texas. The uh judge apparently molested the uh sheriff's daughter was the story I saw. That's right. That's well, that uh sounds about right. Yeah. Sounds like he should walk free, but he's uh, being in charge of murder. Uh let's see what Go to news. Like I, I saw that he, I saw oh, that he. Wow, the Washington Post and the New York Times have picked it up now. Yeah, We're but I, I like the Commonwealth of Kentucky today. I, I saw that he shot him because that he had molested his daughter. But every mainstream article I read didn't mention anything about that part. Just that he went back and shot him, and everybody was you know so distraught that this judge got shot that they didn't mm. mention that he was a child molester. Strangely enough, well, they're wanting to change the venue. 
And the state Commonwealth's attorney is stepping in to help prosecute the case because they don't think they can find a jury that will find the sheriff guilty for killing the judge who molested his daughter. I don't think they're going to find that jury even if they change the venue. I know, right? I think Kentuckians will uh, see the the justice being done. No, I can't see. I don't think he did it. (laughs) Whatever. That's where uh, jury nullification comes in, kids. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, if you think about it, the, the sheriff kind of accelerated the justice process when it came to the judge. Just a little bit. Uh, same, he took same. over uh, as prosecutor and executioner all in a very short period of time and then walked out of the judge's room and said, well, all right, you can take me into custody, press your charges. I'll go to jail. The jail that I run. I don't know that I would have done much different in his position. I mean, if you want to do the temporary insanity thing, you just stand there um, after you've emptied the whole magazine and you keep pulling the trigger and pulling the trigger and pulling the trigger until they come in and get you. Yeah, that's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. I saw that story on American Vigilantes many years ago on uh, Discovery Channel or some shit where this guy's kid was uh, in some martial arts program and had gone out to uh, compete somewhere and the instructor abducted him and sexually molested him. And when they finally caught the instructor and they were bringing him back, the uh, father heard on the radio that they were bringing him in through this airport and he was standing there pretending like he was on the telephone and uh he freaking as soon as the guy walked by he dropped the phone and just fucking shot him right in the fucking head dropped the gun went over and hung up the phone and the jury acquitted him wow. as, they, as they should so they've gone back and edited the stories and made them shorter huh Rather than change words, it's gone from like 500 words to maybe 180. Huh. Kentucky today, but it's been updated. It's further redacted. Why? Anyway. Oh, because apparently they let some shit out they weren't supposed to. Yeah. that That's why I do it. I'm just kidding, folks. I don't ever let shit let's, out. I'm not supposed let's to. Let's look up the local man. That, that's the great thing about not lying to people. You don't have to worry about that shit. Nah, it's easy. To remember yeah. your story. Yeah. Oh, W L E X. Huh? How, how does Ulster straighten you, Yoda? Uh, um. Let's see. I don't know if you heard you, Rob. Oh, what 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 is that, Rob? I asked you how your ulcers are doing. Oh, uh, really good. I've taken my medicine and uh, I, I'm, I'm able to eat regularly now. Plus, I've been using the supplements that Tallulah May sent me from oh, nice. North Carolina. So that's helped nice. a lot too. Abandoned sugar. I saw you drinking sugar, drinks sugar, sugar, sugar. Abandon that shit. You get better and better and better. I would second that. Huh. Now, here's some other story that WLEX was able to uncover. That's the NBC affiliate from Lexington, Kentucky. Let's see. Do I have that pulled? Am I sharing that now with you? Yeah. Yeah, it's up on the screen. Uh, LEX 18. According to court documents, Victim claims that when she couldn't pay for her ankle monitor, Deputy Fields proposed an arrangement. The plaintiff allegedly, uh, the plaintiff alleged that Deputy Fields took off her ankle monitor, and in meetups that followed, he forcibly had sex with her at the Letcher County Courthouse using the threats of arrest 
to coerce her. The plaintiff in that case also sued Sheriff Stein, alleging negligent hiring, training, and supervision of field. On Monday, Steins was deposed over that case. It's unclear if the case has any connection to Thursday. Again, nothing about his daughter hmm. and the mole thing. Nothing about that. Anyway. Um, That's let interesting. Me, let me go back here and see if they have anything. Right, aren't we overdue here. for uh, like a school shooter? Like, shouldn't we shouldn't we be having more gun related events leading up to the selection? I don't think so. Uh, so are they just saving it all for October? There's a why is it always a school? Like, other than the obvious the, easy you know, targets. Uh, I not necessarily like I mean, ever it's, since it's, Mike. Easy targets, it's high trauma. You know, it like it checks all the boxes. D depends where you live. Like my kids' school, you couldn't, they had locked doors. You had to go stand there and show your freaking ID and uh, stand in front of a camera before they even buzz you in. So I, I pulled up um, cop station in the school permanently. I guess like, New York Times is going to let me see a little bit of it. Harry Caudle, 68. Uh, Harry M. Caudle is the country lawyer and author uh, that practiced at the Letcher County Courthouse in Whitesburg. And uh, anyways, he, 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 as he got older, he got ended up with Parkinson and was ill. And uh, he just took out his gun and shot, shot himself. Because uh, uh, I guess he was ready to go. Uh, and he said he wanted no extraordinary life saving. Uh, Night Comes to the Cumberlands is a great, great book by Harry Collins. His first book, maybe the best one. Um, he, uh, anyways, this is going on about Harry Cottle. But, um, you know, Harry Cottle uh, wrote all these books, and most of them tell all of these true stories about gunfights and other shit going down in Letcher County. And then, you know, when he was at the end of his life, he's like, fuck it, I'm just going to shoot myself. And so when I heard what happened at Letcher County Courthouse, I immediately thought of Harry Cottle and all those books he's written and all the stories of bloody Letcher County. It's called Bloody Letcher because, I mean, it's just constant gunplay and shootings. Um, and uh, it's nice to know that in September 2024, they're still keeping it real, son. That's right. That's right. They, Continuing They kept tradition. their powder dry, and then they used it when they needed it. That's right. <laughs> um, probably my favorite story by Harry Cottle. Most of them involve gunplay, but one did not, in fact, and that's the story of um, uh, Lily Cornette or Lally Cornette. I'm not sure how to say it. I think it's Lily Cornette um, or Lily Cornette, maybe. Anyway, or Mr. Cornette um, had a huge uh, land holding of property there in the mountains. Um, I think on Long Lake Fork of uh, uh, that'd be up on the headwaters of Poor Fork Cumberland River. Anyways, uh, <laughs> get to the uh, point, motherfucker. <laughs> it was all virgin timber, never been cut. You know, oak trees with trunks 10 foot fucking wide. You know what I'm saying? It takes like 15 people holding hands to reach all the way around one fucking tree trunk. You know, I mean, when, when, Hardwood so, trees in the Appalachian Mountains used to look like sequoias and redwood before. This is like a Mark Twain story. The massive yeah, clear cut. The so, he gets, anyway, the more winding the stories become. L Lally Cornet has, I, I think it's like around 1,800 acres, almost 2,000 acres, I want to say. So, 
me get cut to the chase. So, of course, the day comes and railroad agents with the logging company come up to his front porch and they want to buy timber rights off of him. They want to log his tree. And he's like, ah, ah, I've never had any of that log. It's all virgin timber and it's full of white oak. And I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I couldn't really sign any contract or do anything like that with do any business with you guys, unless I really, really knew what kind of timber we're talking about. I mean, uh, are you guys going to cruise the timber stand and actually, you know, do an estimate of the board foot we're talking about? I mean, uh, oh yeah, we'll cruise. He's like, all right, then. When you cruise the, the when you cruise the timber, I want you to write it all down, put it in a book for me, and and then we can talk business. So they go out there and they cruise this entire fucking mountainside, make a little book, put in it every fucking tree they look at everything. They give him the book. He looks through it, and you know they're on the porch for hours. Finally, it's like, all right, let's talk business. This book is mine to keep. Yep. Pulls out his fucking gun and says, get the fuck off my porch here. Step on my ground again. I'll shoot you dead. Uh, and then um, when he passed away, he donated the land to the Eastern Kentucky University. Oh, hi. EKU, uh, Eastern Kentucky University, located in Richmond, Kentucky. Um, and that's now the uh, Cornette Woods sanctuary and it's one of the only completely pristine virgin timber stands that i know of in in the entire east coast and all through all of appalachia i mean even in the adirondacks and the catskills um the protected lands they were all logged out long ago there's no there is no virgin stand there is no piece of land that never ever never ever never ever been logged or timber cut but with sole exception of Cornette's Woods in uh, Whitesburg uh, well just outside Electric County Courthouse yeah. so, isn't that exciting yeah, how is that? The, that's awesome judge, you know what else is exciting judge Yona Chambers you know what else is exciting? We finally Ooh, look at that swag. You yeah, got that shirt. we finally got it up on the store. Fuck yeah, man! Yeah, fuck it, we ball. And the best part comes in five different colors, so you can Holy pick shit. what you think's gonna make you look the best. Isn't that awesome? Wow! Best part, ladies, nice. if you have giant tits. It'll just say, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. You got to lift them up to, hit, to see the wee ball part. That's right. At That's which right. point you, you're literally balling. So and it, and it also shows that you mean business. Especially yeah. if you get it wet. The wet so, you know, why don't you tell us about the freak out party that you went to at one of Diddy's... Uh, Oh Southern. shit! You went to a freak out party. You sure did. Uh, we weren't going to mention that on air, Rob. <laughs> what stays in the piney woods of New Jersey stays in the piney woods of New Jersey. It wasn't in Atlantic City. It was just outside of Vineland. Nobody well, needs to know. I guess the video will come out eventually. Bad Boy Entertainment. We were just talking about that before you jumped on. How, how do you feel about uh, what's going on? You think he's going to be the sacrificial lamb? He's going to take a bunch of people down with him. He's got, you know, some kind of contingency plan. They gave him a long time to. Uh, he come up with a is a minor plan. character. He's not at the top. Sure, he was. Um, he was. Uh, 
the the new guy, the flashy young guy. I mean, he got brought into Def Jam, but when you're talking about Def Jam, you're talking about Big Russ Daddy, you know, Russell Simmons, oh Russie, that's oh, wow. that's the top dog. Lucian that's, that's Gray on motherfucking Capo, son. And so the real question to me is. Is the other shoe going to drop? Are they going to go in and, and go up the ladder? Or is or is Diddy going to get the Jizz Lane Maxwell treatment? And, oh, that's it. And, you know, wash your hands. And, and nothing to see here. And moving on. Depends who, depends who gets elected and which politicians they do get exposed. I don't know. Maybe. It's got to be a lot of political class in there and athletes and movie stars. On tape, I didn't think out. Weinstein would oh, be yeah. taken down. I'm surprised Diddy's being taken down, but I think uh, I think Sim, I think Russell Simmons is next. I think he's yeah. They finally got that Nygaard fucking monster. But Peter Nygaard, the the one up in Canada. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, fucking waxed him in prison too. He's like, hey, this, Crack- mother- this motherfucker ain't talking. Practically dead. And uh, they sentenced him to pretty much the rest of his life behind bars. Yeah, which wasn't, wasn't he very the long. one that, like, was going down and he had his own, like, little Caribbean island of Dr. Moreau type shit going on down there with, like. Yeah, he would impregnate African women and yeah. then uh, abort them and take the stem cells and get them injected into himself. Sick fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's wow. the one. What up, my Niger? Well, it's good to know that eugenics survived from World War II, right? Yeah, you can only imagine what they're doing. I, I remember... What, what uh, going on in Antarctica? It's, it's hard to say. I'm sure they're doing all kinds of uh, unethical shit that nobody's there to, you know, keep an eye on. But they're doing that shit all over the fucking world in their secret labs anyway. They're doing they that need shit to... in New Mexico. I wouldn't doubt they had some zero-point energy device down there. They were using the power of all kinds of unimaginable technology. You know, uh, the, the tiny cat, I don't know why they'd have to go all the way down there to do it. One of my, uh, <coughs> one of my most favorite, uh, bluegrass standard bluegrass song, um, called, uh, well, they're it's generally called 14 miles to Cumberland Gap. I've also seen 15 miles to Cumberland Gap. Um, there's different versions of the lyrics because. It's a banjo song that was written um, by the uh, by the gray trouser wearing um, rebel army. In fact, it was uh, it was Kirby Smith's Orphan Brigade in the Confederate States of America's army that wrote this song called "14 Miles to Cumberland Gap." Um, which is local Kentuckians, um, you know, the barefoot orphan brigade of Kirby Smith. And, uh, and so the song was written in 1863, I want to say. Oh, wow. Uh, and you know, and it's been played on the banjo in the mountains ever since, because it tells the story of the battle of Cumberland gap, which is, for the uninitiated, Cumberland Gap is where uh, Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky all meet. Mm-hmm. And it's the only break in the Cumberland Ridge, which separates Virginia from Kentucky and separates Carolina from Tennessee. Right. Uh, interestingly enough, sidebar, the, the reason why there is Cumberland Gap um, is because that part of the Cumberland Bridge was actually struck by a huge fucking asteroid. Um, and if you look 
next to Cumberland Gap at Middlesboro, Kentucky, you'll see that it's a perfect fucking crater. Perfectly circular. And the That's not an most asteroid, part of then. the crater is Asteroids don't create gap. perfect circles. Yeah. A plasma well, it's, strike it's, would create a perfect circle. Well, like, it, you know, it, like what not, you see on the moon. It, it's not a totally perfect circle because there's the hollers and the other because it, it it struck an area that had these long Appalachian mm-hmm. mountain ridges that are all running like on a diagonal from the southwest to the northeast, the same the way they are across Pennsylvania and Maryland and elsewhere. Um, but where the impact hit that ridge, it, it knocked a hole creating Cumberland Gap, um, and, and left the, oh, what's that shit called? Iridium, I think it is, Hmm. from, from the, the actual, uh, meteor or asteroid or whatever the fuck it was. And it, and you know, when it vaporized and it, and it shot into the fucking rocks all around. Um, but uh, so, Cumberland Gap. <clears throat> that was the uh, basically the entrance into the wilderness there for the longest time. Hmm. Fuck does that have to do with anything? <laughs> that song, that banjo song, uh, 14 miles to Cumberland Gap, you know. What happened was the uh, the Union Army had marched from um, Withfield, Virginia, which is not far from where the, uh, the Charlottesville Turnpike crosses the New River just below Blacksburg, you know, go Hokies. Anyways, um, they had marched all the way to, it's at the very westernmost tip of Virginia itself, is the Cumberland Gap, US 58 today. Um, and they got to the Cumberland Gap up above Cujo's Cape, and they made camp, and they all laid down and went to sleep. And then the, uh, the rebels come up on them in the morning when they were all still sound asleep and uh, routed them, took most of them uh, prisoner. So the rest of uh, Morgan, uh, George Morgan's men, the uh, Union Army, they then marched from Cumberland Gap all the way to Lexington and to make sure that there was no help for the rebels uh, because they accused the local population of supporting the rebels. Uh, they then uh, burned every barn, burned all the cornfields, uh, took all the horses and livestock that they could with them as they marched up to Lexington. Uh, as you do. Uh, and so and so then, you know, you've got the actual song, um, 14 miles to Cumberland Gap. They burn the meat and the meal and the hay. All the rebels have nothing to eat. George Morgan, you know, and it's, it's just an old standard. Um, but it, it uh, it's kind of like that, that that game you used to play in middle school or grade school or whatever where somebody will say something in the back of the room and you pass it from person to person and by the time it gets to the front of the room, it's whatever was said has been changed. And that's what's happened with, that's why there's like 30 versions of the song and like two different names for the song and everything. Cause it's considered a, most of the time you see 14 miles to Cameron gap. It's just marked as old traditional song and doesn't show the author. I can't remember the author's name, but I mean, basically two angel players. Too old for anybody to earn royalties on it. Kirby Smith's uh, uh, and Kirby Smith's Orphan Brigade, uh, and I'm not endorsing any side in in the uh, American Civil War. It's just a, a a matter of history, and it's interesting how much history 
is told in that banjo song. But then again, it was a wartime banjo song because, I mean, that's what the soldiers did for their entertainment. Um, and I did that to pivot and segue to the fact of I listened to some NPR. That was a long fucking segue, dude. Jesus NPR. Christ. I, I, I've, been, I've been driving around and I've been listening to radio because I <laughs> couldn't get very many radio stations and I got I got the NPR. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where they National talk like this. Petroleum radio drizzle. And well, I know. uh I've listened God, to NPR those before. Are fucking insufferable. Right. Oh. Do you think that they uh find any kind of like fucking awkwardness and that they all have the same opinion on uh, the same political issues and they go out there and espouse them in every uh, report that they do on anything without any uh, semblance of objectivity or looking at the other yeah. side and no no I think they're all rewarded handsomely and they don't give a and fuck I mean, I, I I would agree. I know like for the a network, fact Scott Pelly does not give a fuck. At the network, at, at the network level, I can see that, but at the fucking NPR level, it's is the government really funding them that much? And L- listen, the, Rob, no, it's not okay, government. Um, they have private funding. The echo, the echo chamber that's listening. Dude, to when it bullshit. comes to NPR, Robert Wood Johnson now, Foundation. The, do you know what that Hunt is, Act Rob? Is not going to modernize. Oh, the, the, the guy, whole village, Hillary Clinton. The yeah. guy whose uh, channel was man, mandated on cable television and became a billionaire. That Robert <laughs> Wood. BET no, Robert Network. Wood Johnson. Robert oh, the, Wood Johnson was a prominent eugenicist back at the turn of the century. He set up a foundation to uh, uh, further the eugenic sciences. I think it's it's under the probably under the guise of hygiene. You know that's usually how they do it. Um, I can't well, you remember right off the, the top of my head. But, breed drizzle. Yeah. I mean, we need to have better human breeding. Am I right? Defective protoplasms and such. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Trip, man. What's wild about eugenics is all the different um, layers of paint that they've thrown on it. It's been red washed, gray washed, green washed. Now it's just one layer of green after another because, you know, it's all about. Well, you know, we have to kill more humans to save the earth, make more room for nature. Am I right, Guidestone? Oh, never mind. They're gone. Well, they've got uh, the propaganda amped up so kids uh, growing up are like afraid to have children because they don't want to destroy the planet and they think that, you know, they have anxiety over ruining the planet. It's uh, amazing how they've turned things so anti-human and so technocratic. I wouldn't have expected it when technology was first emerging, I was very naive to what they were going to use it for. So, um, the fact that all of the media is now just piling on that this is just uh, a hoax, that it, it, that it's a hoax that there's so many Haitians that they're eating cats. They're not eating people's pets. That's a hoax. And Springfield is not overrun with Haitians. And now they fear for their lives because of this hoax. And I, I mean, that's all. It's just, well, it's just it's a pump fear. Which tells fear, me it's fear. true. Because the motherfuckers that constantly lie and tell me everything that I know that's true is a lie, when they're saying something's a lie, I immediately start to wonder, well, how true must it be? Right. Because pretty much you can just go opposite of whatever the fuck they're saying. Not 100%, but for the most part. Generally speaking, trust, but verify. I know we had a big Canadian geese problem here in southern New Jersey, and they used to hire border collies to go out and chase them out of business park lakes and uh, golf courses. I think we could use just like, you know, maybe a roving migrant fucking clan to come have some fucking goose. 
but I guess that would uh, feed into the, <laughs> the hysteria. That's, I mean, that's what they really want. They just want everybody afraid, everybody to clamor for the government to come up with their solution, their mm -hmm. problem reaction solution. And now we're going to give you digital IDs. But while we're fucking making you get that, we're also going to give it to these uh, people who were illegals. Now they're naturalized citizens all of a sudden. And guess what? They're voting for the uniparty. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, to, to be fair to the record, um, we have uh, one case of video of an Ohio resident with the cat still eating it, um, being interrogated. That's that. On the other hand, I thought that and was to me, in like the more significant something. part of the story is the fact that we're not talking about dozens or perhaps hundreds we're talking about thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fucking Haitians in Springfield like yeah what was the population uh, that's before the they... real story I mean and was... so no offense yeah. to the cat that was eaten but I mean and I Again, I, I never did see any cats, so I think that there's more to that. But that that the whole cat thing aside, the real fucking issue is this immigrant triangle between Cincinnati, Columbus, and then back over to Dayton, and then back down to Cincinnati, and everything in between, which includes Springfield and Xenia and el elsewhere. Um, Xenia with an X. Um, and, I mean, it's... There's easily quarter million, easily 250,000 immigrants, all within that area, all new arrivals, all within the last four years. It's staggering. And then you get up to Columbus proper and easily one-third of Franklin County, Ohio, habla solamente castellano. And so if you don't speak uh, the Mexican, you should have luck. Just so happens wild, that I do. Appalachian, Southern Ohio, it ain't like that. Yeah, there's pockets of Mexicans, but we don't have down here the Nepalis and the Somalis and the Tirgits and the Kurgids and the Uzbekis and the fucking Kazakis and the. God damn, man! I it's, it's I don't even know where to start. It's it's a fucking sea of fucking immigrants and. They're all at the indoor mall. You know? Really? They're all at the fancy-ass Dayton Mall in Miamisburg. They're all at Eastgate Mall. They all got fucking money and fucking bank cards. And they got their... I'm like, who is... This is a major... This is a well-financed logistic for... Yeah. Basically, I mean, a human trafficking operation. It sounds like an open operation society's type of operation. Thing. Is That's what it sounds like. Story. That's it's a massive yeah. human trafficking logistical nightmare of having to bust them here, bust them there. I mean, Drizzle and I personally saw them in the midst of being bussed around with, what was it, three, four fucking, a whole entourage. Yeah. Like, I mean, what what <laughs> what kind of uh, natural immigration has buses waiting to take people to certain areas and give them money? And um, I know, right? <laughs> That's the real story. Never mind Meow Burger. I'm like, fuck it, man. Yeah. I don't know. Well. I mean, it's it sucks that it's happening to Springfield, obviously. But. It sucks again, everywhere. It's, it's. How far is Springfield from East Palestine, Yona? Uh, they're on opposite ends of the state, like bookends on a book right. East well, Palestine is still. essentially uh, the westernmost part of the Pittsburgh uh, suburbs. I, I it's a sub a, right, East right, right, Palestine right, right, right. is a bedroom community for Pittsburgh. It's about a 35 to 40 minute commute from East Palestine right. to downtown Pittsburgh. So yeah, it's a bedroom community, Rob. 30, 40-minute drive into work. Yep, bedroom community. Um, 
I don't think people are going to remember Springfield a month from now. Uh, so ultimately, I don't Ohio, think it really like hand, registers is with most a people. major, major railroad and highway intersection town. It's on the National Turnpike. Um, it's pretty much the halfway point between Columbus and Indianapolis. Hmm. And it's uh, honestly, it's well, no, it's not the halfway point. I'm thinking of the other town right there near Richmond. Uh, Zanesville. Zanesville's the halfway point. Springfield's mm, 40 miles west of Columbus. So it's basically a bedroom community for Columbus. So there you go. That's the difference. But they're both served by Norfolk Southern. And, and of course, we know Norfolk Southern serves East Palestine. And they serve <laughs> Springfield as well. Yeah, Springfield sure is served by three railroads, as but I again, recall. My, my point is the, the way that they're cramming so much into each news cycle. I don't think people are going to hold on to this very much longer. But like, it does it, worry me Next week, that... it's going to be something else. The week after that, it's going to be something else, and it's just going to get buried. Back to uh, Springfield Mayor Rob Rue, who is now, I'm sure, still wearing his red boots and cape because he has oh, now he, assumed he red boots, indefinite... Huh? temporary super duper emergency powers that will be um dialed back um uh, as the situation improves so um uh, seems very definite metrics there for that They're not subjective in the least right because <laughs> government always relinquishes emergency powers as soon as it's no longer necessary and so because of the great 2024 cat hoax, um, he now has these emergency powers, which I've not seen much elucidated in any journalism as to what all these emergency indefinite but temporary powers are. Well, definitely imprisoning anybody who put out memes and su suggesting yeah. that the immigrants were eating cats. I mean, that's the first step. I mean, I would like to think that, I'm indefinitely temporarily alive. To a certain extent. To a certain I live extent. on through the music. Yeah. So I'm guessing I probably shouldn't set foot in Ohio for a bit. Or maybe just Springfield. Just stay away from Springfield. Well, it's it's kind of like when you go to the Caribbean, Driz. Well, I don't think You're I can fine stop making so memes is what I'm clear saying. Of the Bermuda <laughs> Triangle. And when you're in Ohio, you're fine so long as you steer clear of the immigrant triangle. And and I it's basically bordered by I-70, I-71 and I-75. There you go. Simple math. The big <laughs> triangle I get so much of that part of the country confused, like we'll, we'll Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. It all looks the same. Big open space yeah, with nothing around. Oh, yeah. So. That area is part of the Ohio prairie land where it's just flat and open and um, kind of boring. Yeah. And covered just absolutely covered with Ohio strode ways. Strodes. Where it's five lanes of death. Go ahead and bust the left. Oh, wait. Now there's ramps. Feels like an interstate, man. We're cruising all right. And fuck, another stoplight. What the <laughs> hell? Stoplight so on the road with ramps. It's kind of like uh, U.S. Route 1 in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. You're tooling along. There's on-ramps. There's off-ramps. And blam! Fucking, there goes the jug handle. We're pulling up to a light. What the fuck? You pull out of the light. Back to ramps again. 
Wow. Like, I, it's like a schizophrenic road. It, it, is it a street? Is it a road? Is it a freeway? What the fuck's going on here? No, and then it true. busts into that fucking constant center turn lane. I went on a big rant about this the other night. I'm not going to go down that road again. He did. I still don't road. understand why. I'll take the back road. <laughs> it's just laziness. It's, it's laziness on the part of highway engineering to just throw open a center lane and say everybody can use this however they want at the same time. And the madness ensues, Drid. I mean, I, you're not wrong. Yeah. Especially, especially with these people. Like, these people, you, you can actually, like, put a sign. You can paint it on the street, like, what that lane is used for. And people are just like, ah, it's just road. Like, my favorite stretch of road has got to be... Oh, let me think now. Ah, it's, uh, I think it's U.S. Route 22, maybe. It's a freeway from Pittsburgh International Airport cutting over toward Columbus through Weirton, West Virginia. Actually, about maybe 20 miles south of East Palestine, um, dioxin training fire. Um, and along that stretch of freeway, literally every mile, there's big white signs on the right and left side, you know, so you pass them at the same time saying left lane for passing only always keep to the right. Yeah. People ignore those signs everywhere all across the country. And, uh, especially know, I mean, in New Jersey. Oh my God. Like Alabama, New Jersey. Shit. Alabama? Have you ever driven in Maryland, Rob? Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. And there's, and there's cops everywhere waiting. If yeah. you go over the speed limit, five yeah. miles an hour. Oh, are we talking about Maryland? Yeah. God. Damn. And then motherfuckers with their speed traps too, where they've got it cut out of the bushes. I mean, seriously, yeah. guys. Seriously. I've got more. Wait, right at the bottom of the fucking hill, right there, coming in on I-68, Cumberland, Maryland, when you're on like an 8% downhill slope for six miles, and then all of a sudden, right at the bottom of the hill, it drops from 55 to 50 because of that sharp curve, and uh, Cumberland, Maryland, you know. <laughs> and there they are. Yeah. Got a hole cut out of the fucking bushes where you can just pull right out of the median. You can't even fucking see him. Until you go past him. And you're like, oh, there he is. But yeah, there he is. And then, I mean, last time I went through there, I went even a half mile down the road and I see him pop out through his lights on. He got him. He got somebody doing 54 to 50. Ooh, oh, God. Him. It's time for some revenue collection, Rob. Nailed him. Pretty much. Gotcha, bitch. Taking care Welcome of the real Maryland, criminals. The Catholic state. The real criminals in society. <laughs> While Baltimore is fucking unchecked, people get shot at the ba- People is driving the in Bay the buildings. State? Is Maryland called the Bay State or is that Massachusetts? No. What is Maryland? Massachusetts is the Bay State because of Massachusetts Bay. It's also the Chesapeake State. I don't know. I know. Oh, by the way, uh, I looked it up. Robert Wood Johnson, uh, one of the founders of Johnson and Johnson. Oh, uh, of course. Yeah. And they did make their own vaccine. Yeah, the guy first one yanked off the market for causing yes, blood clots. That's correct. But I guess Maryland nobody got any is policies. The old line state. The old line state? Is that yep. referring to the Mason Dixon line? I guess so. Uh also wow, the Little America State. The Little America State. Yeah. Never 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 saw that on their license plates. Nope. Maryland, the old line state. Wow, that that's really boring. That's 
really sad. I mean, have you ever seen the state flag? Looks like a fucking Rorschach test. <laughs> yeah. Nah. So there was uh, Nicholas Mason and Jeremiah Dixon who came from the uh, uh, Greenwich Engineering School there, Greenwich, England. Uh, they were the royal surveyors who were commanded to ordered to settle the land dispute between the Protestants and the Catholics because uh, Maryland had been settled by the Catholics. And so Mason and Dixon came in and that essentially Protestant Catholic line um, then became the old line that separated the north from the south. Um, and the initial survey was begun there uh, at, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? It's right up above uh, Assateague Island there, um, Delmarva Peninsula. Anyways, hmm. the line runs due west, uh, close to Salisbury, Maryland. Yeah, and, it and it's a straight north. line, too. Straight line, and then it cuts up and goes due north all the way up to uh, the the Wit the Wilmington Arc because uh, yeah. the east side of the line is now Delaware, but Delaware was part of Pennsylvania at the time, um, being the eastern and northern neighbor to Maryland. Uh, but anyways, you get up to the Wilmington corner, and then it just ran due west all the way. To almost hitting the Ohio River, but uh, the line then turned and ran north with Pennsylvania's line until it hit the Ohio River. And that's why West Virginia has that panhandle on the top, which makes the middle finger. Right. Um, and that's the part of West Virginia that touches the dioxin hole um, in East Palestine, which is essentially right on top of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio. West side, Pittsburgh wow. metro. So this, <laughs> but this that's the whole Mason time, Mason East Palestine's been getting the finger. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, all this time. Well, and really, the top of the finger is uh, East Liverpool, uh, Ohio, which is the river town that's just below East Palestine. Right. All right, guys, great chat. I got to bounce. The, um, All right, Rob. Take care, man. Oh, take care, Rob. A lot of the uh, toxic dirt and during the cleanup and stuff at uh, East Palestine there by Norfolk Southern and R.J. Corman that came in to do the track repairs, uh, they sent that stuff to be burned and incinerated in East Liverpool. Huh. Uh, and of course, there was bitching and complaining about that. Oh, of course. So then they just quietly started shipping it up to, I think, Michigan. And then that story got out. And the neighbors were like, What are they doing over? Going on the side of that fence? Not in my backyard. But, anyways. So. Yeah. <laughs> Not really quite sure what happened on that I'm, I'm hoping that everybody just forgot about that i think they did i i think it, pretty much everybody forgot about it just like they forgot about the the blast of the port in beirut four years ago in august that was like one of the most massive explosions to ever take place yeah yeah, I've seen a lot of videos of that. It looked like a fucking hyperbaric bomb. Almost like yeah. a nuclear bomb. I mean, the fucking almost. blast wave knocking out glass for like, what was it, like 12 fucking miles? Yeah. 12 miles from the, and they're like, oh, it was just agricultural oh, it, fertilizer. fertilizer. It, yeah, it was fertilizer that went bad. I'm like, 
man, bullshit. Sure that it was. was. Fucking... Bore bullshit. a hole down into the earth. Sure. <laughs> and then, again, just like everyone forgot Nashville Christmas Day 2020. Yeah. So, you know, people will f- forget about Springfield. We'll probably be looking back a year from now. Uh, for some reason, something will have triggered somebody's memory. and They'll be like, oh, shit. You remember when they were eating the dogs and the cats? It really hurts my brain. I, I've just I've got this image burned in my mind of this uh, front yard that I drove past today. They had four flagpoles. Oh, yeah. And one of the flags was a uh, never Paris forget nine one one 11 flag that had the twin towers on it. Uh oh. And then it had a Trump Vance flag. And then an American flag. Wait for it. And what do you think that fourth flag was? P O W M I A. No, it was um, Israeli Zionist. Oh, jeez. And I'm like, okay, on the flag on the far right, you've got never forget 911. And then the flagpole all the way left, you've got the Israeli flag. That's right. And what's in between them? I'm so confused. Trump and American flag. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying is is Trump did 9-11? I'm just saying, like, for somebody to put those four flagpoles together, I mean, have they made the connection? Are they subliminally making the connection? Or should I apply no. Occam's razors and say no. they're really fucking stupid? Yeah, like, yeah, they're really, pretty, they're pretty just, damn dumb. It, everything's just yep. straight over, Look. right over the head. If they're flying the 9-11 never forget flag. With an Israeli flag in the same. No, um, no. I'm just saying that one flag on its own. If they're flying that. Then they're, they're, they're lost. Yeah. That was a slogan. That was an engineered slogan. That was. And it shows planes hitting both of the buildings. I mean, if it was me, correct. I was going to have a never forget which is, flag, which is a, a trauma trigger. I would have like a, a like a wily coyote down in the corner, like pushing the acme handle down. Right. Well, they probably don't know something. about building you know, seven. Try to make so. it realistic. They definitely okay. don't know about building six or building seven. Right. Well, I already said that. You start with seven. You always start with seven to lead into six. Never the opposite. Because nobody knows about building six. That's right. A lot of people know about the new prisoners. Not everybody knows about the new number six. It's the same thing. If you say so. Same thing. So are you going to be on Saturday Night Anarchy tomorrow night? The... Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, yes, I will. I will be around. All right. Uh, I'm gonna be hanging out with the Yonalings. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give uh, Major Tom his first dose of the Anarchy tomorrow night. Oh yeah. So he can uh, he can say hello to uh, the other uh, Major Tom. Whew. You know, I, I was. Amazed, there was something. I was, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The fucking freight train, the double stack fucking ship TEU containers. You know, freight train, double stack freight train, rolling down the Norfolk Southern Main Line, right. parallel to U.S. Route 23 from Columbus, heading toward Norfolk, Virginia. But on the stretch I was at, just outside of Portsmouth, Ohio. Yes, I said Portsmouth. Um, Sawada County, and I'm like flying. Speed limit's forty five. 
I'm doing like 55, almost 60. And I notice on my left that I'm not catching up to the train. The train is still passing. I was like, wow. Wow. That freight train is all in fucking ass. And Damn. then we get to another stretch where it comes out of the curve. And I can see where it's going across the farm road at grade rail crossing. And and it's making every single car wobble. You know. Oh, wow. Uh, because he's fucking doing like, I finally caught up to him and was able to pace with him right at about 68 miles an hour. And then I saw the little white diamond sign that said 50, which is his speed limit. Oh, and wow. So, yeah, I'm a fucking speed. All in ass, yeah. He's got that train up to almost 70 miles an hour, and it's on wooden ties. Eee. With, you know, segmented rail that's bracketed and bolted and held together with brackets. It's right. not continuous weld rail on that section. Probably a good thing that, like, it wasn't a passenger train. Well, I mean, that's the thing. When the Amtrak comes through, it's hauling ass which is normally hauling ass for a train is like 40 or 45 or 50 right on the track given how uneven the track is and how poorly maintained it is um and so then to see like just in the midst of this cargo train and you know when i finally gave up and slowed back down and then I got into the other parts of the train, all these old box cars and oil tankers and just rusted bad. And then you can see some of them, the fucking, the little doors on the uh, brakes where you're supposed to put oil on it. Or that's missing. And there's like grass growing out of some of the brake boxes. And I'm just like, God, damn, this motherfucker's doing 70 miles an hour speeding the train through and of course the train has got three power locomotives at the front and then one in the middle that way it can be a full two and a half miles long god wow it's just i i I mean i'm just waiting every day to hear about the next Hmm. terrible fucking train derailment it's coming I guarantee uh, you that. Hey, before and of course, uh, the big push is they want to go to just one crew member, uh, one guy to Jesus run the whole Christ. train. No. Computers and AI will run the rest of it. Don't sure worry. Sure it will, of course. Uh before we leave the air tonight, I want to let everyone know next Friday, September twenty seventh, we will be joined by Steve Poikinen from AM Wake Up Slow News Day, oh, Blunt Force Wisdom, and many more of your other favorite shows other than Liberty Radio, obviously. Uh and I think Steve is even going to uh he's he's probably gonna join us about an hour into the broadcast, and I think even stick around for some open lines as well. Uh, so wow. that should be a whole lot of fun next Friday night. Wanted to make sure. That's what you call a verifiable powwow, a Friday night powwow. Yeah. Which means uh, bring your own bud. We'll supply the peace pipe. Right. That's right. I, I, that's about all I got. I, that's I all got I got, got man. We still got here. like it's a minute and a half left. Out the, the Strodeo track. <laughs> Nah, I just, uh, yeah. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow night for uh, Saturday Night Anarchy over on the new Prisoners channel. You never know who's going to show up. That's that's half of the fun. The other thing is you never know what the fuck Wheezy's going to say. That's the other half of the fun. Oh, the best part is when Wheezy has his tasty old shit. The sauce. Saucy wheezy. It's like saucy nugs. You could get regular yeah. chicken nugs and then open the little container of ranch or whatever, honey mustard, whatever you're dipping your nugs in. But this is 2024. Now you can get the nugs already sauced. 
Wheezy's the same way. You can get Wheezy already sauced. And already sauced, yeah. It hits different, but it slaps. It's good. <laughs> Tune in for more, folks. Oh, my goodness. Say good night, Yona. Have a good night, folks. Talk safety. What's the again you got? We'll see you next week, folks. We're back on the air Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Good night, Gracie.